Hey y'all, it's September and we're still experiencing extreme heat in my part of Texas. So I think to counteract that, we should make all the fall DIYs. It could be our own field of dreams, like make it, make all the fall DIYs and it will come. Yeah, no? Let me show you some easy and affordable DIYs so you can get your house ready for fall. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. For this DIY, take a pumpkin shape from the Dollar Tree. Mine had slats in it, but if you can't find this one, you can just tape off the sections to paint it. And I paint the outer two sections with folk art paints in the color. Well, actually, I think it's orange, but maybe it's pumpkin. <laughs> I'm not sure. I picked up a beautiful teal throw blanket from Target in their dollar spot and that inspired me to choose this teal color called Moody Blue from Deco Art that I'm painting in the middle section. And for the remaining two sections, I'm painting those with folk art paint in the color Vintage White. I painted this wood word that says Grateful with apple barrel paint in the color black, but I felt it was too dark for the sign. So I took some Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint in the color Espresso Bean, and I went over it, but it was still too dark. Also, Captain's helping me. <laughs> I pulled out my folk art matte. I pulled out my folk art matte paint in the color Mushroom, and I think that lightened it up enough, so we just went with that. And I say we because Captain is still helping me. <laughs> Now it's time to make the bow. And y'all, I've watched tons of people make bows. I've practiced making bows and I still feel like my bows are just, you know, okay. So for today's attempt, I'm taking some burlap wire ribbon and I'm making a loop with one piece. And with another piece, I'm just kind of cinching it in the middle and tying it with some jute twine. And this is gonna be the tails to my bow. So I stapled that to the sign and because the sign is so thin, it pokes out of the bag. So I have to take my hammer and kind of bend down the ends of the staple back so that they aren't so pokey, you know? And then I take the loop and I pinch it in the middle and um, I use some jute twine to hold it together. And I hot glue that to the middle and I also staple it down. And again, I have to press down the staples so they don't poke through too much. I added some lamb's ear and I used some Dollar Tree wood glue to glue down the wood word. And this is how this adorable sign turned out. Super cute and pretty easy to make. You can customize the colors to fit your decor and you can always hand litter on whatever word, you know, suits your fancy. So. I love how this one turned out. Y'all, I'm always excited to host the first Friday playlist with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. She's amazing and really is super talented. I love how she paints and her gingerbread DIYs are awesome. Our guest host this month is Fabi from Arrows DIY and I've loved getting to know her better. She's really just the sweetest person and she also has some awesome DIYs on her channel as well. Both will be linked below as well as the playlist where you'll get tons more inspiration. I love to hang a garland over my stove on my vent hood and I keep a strand of jute twine with some beads up there year round just because, you know, <laughs> I like how it looks. But also because I can add small pieces to it to fit the season or holiday and it just adds some cute decor in a small space. For DIY number two, I'm gonna be making a fox garland and I got these little wooden foxes from the Dollar Tree and I'm painting them with Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And for the lighter areas, I'm gonna be using folk art paint in the color vintage white. And I do try to blend a little bit where the pumpkin and the vintage white color meet so it's not like a stark line or anything. For the eyes, nose, feet, and tip of the tail, I'm using an espresso bean color as well as some nutmeg brown and black. I layer them on starting with the lighter color and then going darker. And you probably can't even tell I did that, but sometimes I just do things to feel fancy, you know? And I don't know why I put their eyes practically on the back of their head. I used vintage white to define the ear area because I forgot to leave that blank. And this is how my project turned out. I just put them up there with masking tape so when it's time to change things out, I can do it really pretty easily. I think it turned out adorable. This wood round circle came from Dollar Tree, but I'm actually going to be using the back. If you don't have this sign, you can use another wood round sign or you could really use just any shape you want. You're just going to have to modify how you lay things out. And I'm painting it with folk art paint in the color linen. These beautiful rub-on transfers came from Dollar Tree as well, and I'm just laying them out to kind of see how they're gonna look best. 
I did accidentally lay one on the rub on transfers on top of another, so it kind of messed it up, but you know, I was careful with the rest of them. And I had two packages and I used one package completely and then a few from the other package. And it also has some leaves in there, so I used those to kind of fill in some of the spaces. And I just cut around each little piece, placed it on the wood round where I wanted it, and then I used a scraper tool to kind of transfer it on. You can use your, like a craft stick or whatever, you can use your fingernail for, you know, if you want to. But again, just laying them out how I want to and rubbing them on. Here's how it's looking so far, and I just love the subtleness of it. I love the colors in these transfers. I just think they look so pretty. I got this wood word in a mystery box for my friend Tammy from the Rusted Willow, and I knew it would be perfect for the sign, so I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. I used Dollar Tree wood glue to attach the word to the sign, and that's it. I thought about adding a bow to the sign, but I'm actually going to be putting this in a wreath so that it will kind of frame it out, and I'll see if it needs a bow then. But for now, I love the simplicity of it, and I love the colors. Hey y'all, I wanted to pop in here and share that I have a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. I would love it if you join and if you'd share a project you're working on. So the link is going to be below. Check it out. This cute little fox sign came from Dollar Tree. I was in the Pacific Northwest visiting my kids and my grandkids. And of course, I stopped by Dollar Tree because you never know what you're going to find. Different Dollar Trees have different things in them, so it's always fun to look. And you can see the tailpiece broke off. So I use I sand that area and then I use a small craft stick as a brace and with some Dollar Tree wood glue, I glue it back together and I put some painter's tape on it to hold it and let it dry overnight. This blank sign came from Dollar Tree and I have taped it the sides so that it doesn't get paint on it when I'm painting the sign with folk art paint in the color linen. Cause I can get messy when I paint. <laughs> so I gotta be careful. This stencil is new at Dollar Tree and I thought I'd test it out. I had seen Brenda from the Rustic and Lace uh, DIY channel use it so I kind of had a heads up on how flimsy it would be and there wasn't really a way to tape it down on all sides so I just taped one side and then I used that vintage white color and a sponge dauber brush from Dollar Tree to kind of bounce up and down on the stencil I do that to kind of help it from bleeding I then dabbed on some folk art paint in the color linen and there were some parts of the stencil that were pretty delicate so I had to be careful because I couldn't tape it all the way around. I kind of had to use my fingers to hold stuff in place and for the most part it turned out but there were some splotchy pieces. I did need it to cover the whole area of the sign so I had to try and put it on the other side but make sure that it wasn't upside down and that it didn't you know mess up or smear the side I'd already completed. I had used my heat gun to dry that stenciled side but I laid down a piece of paper to cover that part anyway and I started stenciling the other side and that actually worked out okay so on to the next step. The fox's tail had dried overnight, so it was ready to paint. And for this part, I guess I needed <laughs> either company or supervision, so Captain was on hand to help. And I painted the top part of the fox with Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I meant to leave his ears unpainted, but I'll fix that later. And then I painted the rest of the fox, leaving the tail and his chest area unpainted. Because they're not going to be that same color. <laughs> I painted the areas that were unpainted with the color vintage white. And I used that same color to define the ear area. And I did that same thing where I used the three colors. I used black, nutmeg brown, and espresso bean for the nose, the eyes, feet, and the tip of the tail. So you can kind of see where there's more than one color. I mean, I think you can kind of see that there's two, at least two colors, yeah? No, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I touch up with some pumpkin paint and define the chest area a little bit more. I painted these wood Hello Autumn words with that moody blue color and now that I'm looking back on it, I think I'm going to go back with maybe that espresso bean color and paint the word autumn with that so you can kind of like see the definition between the words better. I don't know. And that's how the stencil turned out. Overall it was fine. There were a couple splotchy parts but you know it worked pretty good. But I wanted to show y'all how the stencil looked the next day. It's, it's not really reusable. <laughs> so just keep that in mind if you buy these. They had several different options at the store I went to. And these are cute, but it seems like they're going to be like a one and done type thing. I'm going to attach the fox to the frame with some wood glue. And I did put a little cube, wood cube under the tail to kind of hold it up. Since it wasn't really touching the other side of the frame and I didn't want it to break again. And I attached the wood words with wood glue and a couple dabs of hot glue, placing it in the top right corner. 
And this is how my project turned out. I didn't add any other embellishments because this is another sign going in one of my wreaths, but I think it turned out adorable. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create, and I hope you enjoyed the projects that I shared today. And if you did, please be sure and give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I've got some fun videos coming up in the next few weeks and I wouldn't want you to miss them. Also, um, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or on Instagram, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye!